This has been a direct broadcast from the National Public Radio. Stay tuned for our literature hour as we discover the microcosmic world of Richard Adams' Watership Down. We gotta get out of this place. The story of Watership Down starts at the Homeworn, a colony of rabbits, and depicts the brotherhood of two of its rabbit inhabitants, Hazel and Fiverr. Fiverr's small size is compensated with his power to foresee the future. He has a strange premonition of evil descending on the Warren and the fields being stained with red blood when they find a signpost with the unforgiving smell of cigarettes. What they do not realize is that the sign is for a future construction site, an unforeseen problem for the rest of the rabbits. Fiverr and Hazel bring the news to their leader, Thria, or the chief rabbit, but he does not believe in Fiverr's powers. Hazel assumes a leader role and decides that they need to leave the Warren. They assemble a group consisting of Dandelion, Blackberry, Pipkin, and Bigwig, a member of the Oslaw, or the leading group of rabbits. Hazel takes advice from his brother, Fiverr. They trek far away from the Warren and stop in a lush field that would be perfect for living, except it is already inhabited. Fiverr tries to convince Hazel to leave, but the food is plentiful and the rabbits are welcoming at the new warren. In the den, they are given as much food as they can eat, but they cannot help but notice the rabbits' peculiarity. The next day, Bigwood gets caught in a snare and all the rabbits are called on to help, but none of the rabbits from the new warren come. They eventually unlock the snare while he is on the brink of life. Fiverr, mentally superior to the other rabbits, explains to his group that the rabbits have so much food because the farmer is supplying them with it to fatten them up and then catch them when they run. The rabbits flee the warren with the addition of Strawberry, a rabbit from the farmer's warren. They soon reach Watership Down, an empty warren perched on top of a hill. Holly and Bluebell, two does from the home warren, arrive and tell a story of human's arrival. The men block the dens and put poisonous gas on the other end. The rabbits try to flee, but most of them got jammed in the holes next to the dead bodies of their own. The group rescues a bird named Kihar, who they hope will help them search for does and other warrens. Later, Kiar finds a warren called a Frafra with a farm next to it. The rabbits split up among the warren and the farm. Hazel goes to the farm and frees the does, but one stays behind. As Hazel flees, he is shot and is expected to be dead until Fiverr returns to rescue him. The other group returns from a Frafra, battered from their harsh ruler, General Woundwart. Hazel plans on returning to a Frafra with a larger group of rabbits to get more time. Bigwig goes into the warren alone hoping they will accept him. With the help of Hyzenthale and Kihar, Bigwig, along with the entire group of rabbits, escapes Ephrafra on a boat, narrowly avoiding the enemy rabbits and General Woundwort. A group from the Ephrafra, led by Captain Companion, tracks them back to Watership Down. Hazel, Dandelion, and Blueberry run to the farm to release the guard dog in hopes that it will attack the Ephrafra on rabbits. Bigwig has a bloody fight with General Woundwort, and defeats him. The dog makes the enemy rabbits f flee, and Hazel is captured by the farm cat. Reluctantly, a woman releases him, and he returns to Watership Down, now a safe haven. A third warren is built between the Frafra and the Watership Down, and filled with rabbits from each. Hazel prospers in the warren until he dies, later than predicted. Richard Adams was born in Newbury, Berkshire on May 9, 1920. He studied history at Bradfield College in Oxford. Adams served in World War II and then civil service between 1948 and 1974. In 1967, Adams told the unwritten version of Watership Down to his young daughters, Rosamund and Juliet, who continued to bother Adams until he finished writing the story two and a half years later. The book was not published until two years later, it won the Carnegie Medal Award and ultimately appointed Adams as president of the Royal Society for Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. Adams is still living today. During the time when Adams was concocting Watership Down, the most prevalent event that was in most people's minds was the Vietnam War, the struggle for expansion by both Europe and the United States. War raged during the Six-Day War between the Arabs and Israelis, 
communist China struck fear into the world with their hydrogen bomb achievement, and the United States and the USSR created the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. When Adams was writing the novel, the Vietnam War was still raging, as well as an ever-changing culture. The time period is clearly demonstrated throughout the novel, each group of rabbits their own country at war. Watership Down's most prevalent literary element is the hero's journey. In the beginning of the novel, the group of rabbits voyages to find a new home, changing their mentality and gaining knowledge throughout. Although they do not return to their same home at the end of the novel, the figurative home is still represented. In Chinua Achebe's Things Fall Apart, the Conquo, the personified form of strength, is exiled from his village while white men change his known culture. When he returns, he is struggling to adapt to the Western ideas. Both books result in death. Okonkwo has his inability to adapt to the new lifestyle, and Hazel, because of his identity, was accomplished. Two opposing scenarios. The two books are similar because of their constant depiction of society in a microcosm form. Rabbits can be correlated with human actions, and although in an alternative tribe, Okonkwo's cosmos can be related to our society. Both novels offer an alternate view of groups of humans. The rabbits are naive towards human society because they do not know the purpose of some of their objects. In Things Fall Apart, the tribe's view of white men is different than what the white men think of themselves. The only clear difference between both of the novels' purposes is that one of the main characters has fur and the other one doesn't. Apart from physicality, both novels depict everyday society to normalize its life. Overall, I, Gabe Scammell of NPR, thought this book was a brilliant way to represent society. I thought it was very clever how Adams not only incorporated a rabbit's actual enemies like dogs and cats, but he also used other rabbits. Although it seems strange reading about rabbits fighting rabbits, I soon realized that it was much like our own world. Richard Adams' writing style initiated the purpose of the novel, which was to reveal the rabbit's unique culture. I also felt that this book gave me insight on my own culture because Adams duplicated our culture into the rabbit's world. I'm still pondering how Richard Adams was able to recreate a rabbit's culture so realistically. We gotta get out of this place.